Welcome to this short lecture on dynamic websites. Remember if you find the information useful in this lecture, give the YouTube video a like and also subscribe to my channel. Now when we talk about dynamic websites, we're really talking about the two sides of data processing. The data processing can be either done on the client side or the data can be processing the information on the server side. All information is collected client side so there may be a request response cycle that occurs and the information could be stored on the client side or stored on a server side. Now when we talk about client side processing we're talking about front end development technologies and these are languages used for a client side processing and presentation layer and these include languages such as HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript and also Bootstrap 4. There are other sort of JavaScript libraries we could actually use, things such as jQuery, and there's frameworks as well where you look at Angular and React. When we talk server-side processing or back-end technologies, we're looking at languages such as PHP, SQL, Python, Java, Ruby, Ruby on Rails, Node.js, and these are languages that process inf data into information on the server and then sent back to the client's browser to be presented to the user. When we're talking dynamic websites, they generally involve a relational database management system. This is so that information can be stored and then retrieved at a later stage. And this is done in the back end on a server. Some of the relational databases you may have used will be the SQL type ones, which are things like MySQL. Other ones such as MariaDB, Mongo, but we're going to be mainly working with SQL based databases. And the one that I'll be focused on my PHP programming on a Raspberry Pi is using MariaDB. We still interact with these databases much the same using either SQLI or PDO sort of structures, but we'll talk more about those later. But most dynamic websites are linked to a database to give it its dynamic information and large pools of data to draw upon to turn into information. When using dynamic websites, there's going to be web server technologies. Some of them include Apache and Nginx. We're going to be mainly focused on Apache at this stage, as this is one of the most popular web server technologies used in the industry. Now, there is a difference between dynamic websites and static websites. Static websites is a term that's given to web pages that only present information. The user may have the ability to click on different hyperlinks to take you to other pages, but the information that's presented to the user is the same. Unless a programmer goes in there and alters the HTML structure of the page, the information is static. It does not allow for interaction, and generally a static website will only use HTML and CSS. When we start talking about dynamic websites, this allows for content to be updated without the programmer's interaction. The information that's presented to the user is shaped for the end user. The languages used are generally HTML, CSS, JavaScript, SQL, and PHP. While HTML and CSS are found on static web pages, these are the presentation languages. JavaScript allows for us to interact with the end user on the client side. SQL allows us to post queries to a database and retrieve information from a database. And the PHP gives us our interaction on the server side. So we can actually take information from the user on the client side, process that through using SQL requests to the database, and then present that back to the user. This whole process is generally made on what's called a web server stack. Now there are several different types of server stacks for dynamic websites. You'll hear these terms of LAMP, WAMP, MAMP, XAMP, and they're all quite confusing, but they have some very common terms once you see them in context. A LAMP uses Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP as the core engines or systems that come together and form the web server. A WAMP is a Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So rather than being built on a Linux-based operating system. A WAMP is built on a Windows-based operating system. Obviously, a MAMP is built upon the Mac OS, still using Apache, MySQL, and PHP. An XAMP is a cross-platform Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl language system that allow it to run on different operating systems. 
So these are the components that make your web server. How does the LAMP stack actually work? Well, it uses what's called a request response cycle. So the Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP work on the server. So a client will actually send a request, the web server will process that request, and return back a response to the client. To look at this more closely, a HTTP request, a hypertext transfer protocol request, will be sent to the web server. When the web server finishes processing that request, a response is returned to the client. Then the browser interprets that response from the web server and displays that back to the user. To look at this more closely, we need to actually look at what's called the request response cycle. This diagram is probably one of the most common ones that help you understand what is this request response cycle. The HTTP request comes from the user's browser. So this request might be index.php. So that is sent to the local host or to the web server IP address and Apache will receive that request. So Apache being the HTTP domain will look for the file that has been requested. So if we are looking for index.php, it then looks in its file structure for that file. Now the PHP is important because it tells the system that you're going to be processing PHP files. PHP files can actually contain HTML5 elements, CSS elements, bootstrap elements, but most importantly, it will contain PHP based elements to be processed on the server. Now this file is processed behind the Apache firewall. So once the file has been found and it has a PHP extension, then it starts processing it going, there's got to be some code in here that I need to look at. So Apache looks at the PHP file and then starts collecting the resources and information that it needs behind the firewall. So this is done on the server side and the client being the user cannot see this occurring. So multiple files can be collected and this could be NAV, navigation.php, all sorts of things can be brought into the PHP being processed. Some of the processes may require interactions with the database. This may be some SQL that needs to be processed. Some information needs to be collected from the database and certain algorithms run on that data to produce the information the user is requesting. Once this processing has been finished, it's then presented to the HTML layer. So Apache prepares a document ready to be sent back to the client. This document that Apache prepares is known as the response. HTML document is sent back to the user. So using the HTTP protocol, the HTML file was sent back to the user for their computer to collect the packets, assemble the file, and for the browser they're using to present the HTML back to the user. Using this process ensures that any algorithms used behind the Apache firewall is not sent back to the user. Therefore, proprietary algorithms, calculations, formulas, cost price, important information like that that's stored in the database is not given directly back to the user. Now this process known as the request response cycle is very important to remember when you're developing dynamic websites. You can see this process being a cycle with a, with a browser request coming in, Apache finding the file, then Apache processing the information, interacting with the database and other files, assembling the information, preparing a HTML document, send a response to the end user. Now, once you understand this cycle, the next big step is should I use MySQLi or PDO? Both MySQLi and PDO have their advantages. PDO will work on 12 different database systems, whereas MySQLi will only work with MySQL databases. So using the PDO method makes it much more easier to transfer your database from one engine to another, where if you use MySQLi, you'll need to rewrite the entire code, including the queries. Now, both methods are object orientated, but MySQLi also offers a procedural API, but both methods support prepared statements. Now, prepared statements protect from SQL injections and are very important for web application security. And we'll discuss that in future lectures. PHP 5 and later can work with a MySQL database 
using either MySQLI extension, which I stands for improved, or the PDO, which is the PHP data objects. Also, PHP, which used to be known as personal homepage, is now called PHP Hypertext Processor. This course will be focused on the PDO for PHP and we'll be using a Raspberry Pi for our local host. So I hope this short lecture gave you an insight into dynamic websites. Now let's get underway and do some coding.